Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here and welcome to my guide to the Zodiac Encounter on the Extreme Difficulty. This drops item level 580 accessories, the music sheet, a crafting material, and sometimes a mount. The guide will be broken up into different mechanics, so if there's one you want to learn in particular, use the timestamps in the description. Before even pulling, I personally just like to set an A marker around where you see here, just behind the arrow in Zodiac's hitbox. There is a mechanic that 50% of this time, this A marker will help you with. Not too important, but it's nice to have. Feel free to place markers on the various circles around the arena that you'll find, I just find that they clutter the screen and make mechanics harder to see. Also, if any player in your group is confident in the fight, place a marker over their head and follow them intensely. The entire fight can be led to success by that singular person, so much so that you really only need this guide if you want to learn the fight yourself. At the start of the fight, Zodiac will use Kokaitis, reducing everyone's HP to 1. You'll have about 20 seconds to heal up before any more damage comes out, so just heal up over time and make sure the tank doesn't die to any auto attacks here. After this, Zodiac will introduce you to one of his primary mechanics, Paradegma. Every time Zodiac casts this, he will summon one of three creatures to perform an AoE on the arena. This first one simply has four birds, one in each corner of the room. These do donut AoE, so everyone just stacks under the northwest bird here at the start of the fight. Right as the bird does its donut AoE, Zodiac begins casting sticks on one of the healers. This AoE hits repeatedly for moderate damage. Be sure to use heals and shields here. Things like Panheima and Lily Bell are particularly effective from healers here, but so long as you mitigate and pop a heal or two, it won't hurt too bad. As the fight goes on, every time Zodiac uses this skill, it pulses an extra time, so be sure to be prepared for the extra hits as the fight progresses. Next is the only tank mechanic in the whole fight, Anya. This is just a small AoE tank buster. Be sure to use Provoke and Shirks during the cast bar and use whatever mitigations you have on it. If you don't swap, then the tank's gonna die to the very next auto attack after it hits. Tanks just run into the boss's hitbox here if you're looking for a safe place to take it. Too often I see a mad shuffle as the tank gets the marker while standing in the party. Since this is the only tank mechanic, feel free to use whatever cooldowns you have for this, but you may also want to sprinkle some across the fight for the various auto attacks you'll be taking. Zodiac will then show you main mechanic number 2, Exeterikos. He will tether to a cardinal side of the arena and form either a triangle or square sigil. Triangle sigils perform a conal AoE from the sigil's location, and squares perform a half room size AoE from the sigil's location. The first Exeterikos will start with a triangle sigil on either the east or west side of the room, followed by either a triangle or square sigil directly in front of Zodiac. If it's two triangle sigils, you can tuck into the corner between them like you see in the video. If there is a square sigil up front, just get right on the other side of the triangle sigil right next to you. Players occasionally just choose to eat the square sigil for uptime, so a barrier shield or mitigation here helps just in case you get one of those in the party finder. No biggie. Next is Paradigma number 2. This one introduces behemoths. These do big point blank AoE, so you almost never want to be standing next to one unless you're doing some fun uptime stuff. This pattern has two birds and two behemoths. Before you decide which bird to hide under, Zodiac will begin casting Agadon. This is a giant AoE through the center of the room that will knock players off if they are hit. This can be mitigated with knockback resist, but to avoid it, you'll need to hide under the one bird not in the dash's path. Also, be sure to be just behind the bird, as Igadon will hit the front half of the bird's safe space in its donut. After this is Phobos, which is a strong room-wide AoE followed by a potent bleed. Do not disrespect this AoE or the dot. Mitigate, shields, and regens go a long way here. If you didn't use Lilybell or Panheimen in the opener, use it here, because it's equally as effective on the bleed. Paradegma number 3 is next, which summons two snakes on the same side of the arena. The snakes are spaced so that there are two rows of the arena that are safe, pretty clearly identifiable. Then Zodiac will use Exotericos and summon either a triangle or square sigil on the east or west side of the arena. If it's a triangle, go to the corner near the sigil. If it's a square, use the opposite side of the arena. The big thing here is Zodiac's biggest mechanic, Astral Flow. When this finishes casting, Zodiac will bind the players in place and rotate the arena under them 90 degrees. There will be arrows indicating which direction the arena will be rotated. This will also rotate any summoned birds, behemoths, or snakes along with it, but the sigils will not be moved. 
The snakes being rotated seems to be the one that confuses people the most. So here is how I identify where to stand. Once I'm safe from the sigil, I line up my camera facing the direction of the snakes. Once I see what direction the arena is rotating, I simply rotate my camera 90 degrees to visualize where they will end up and position myself accordingly. Everyone's brain works different here, so if that doesn't work for you, you might need to figure out your own system, so to say. After another tank buster is Paradigma number 4. This just summons two snakes in a similar pattern, but either on the east or west side of the room. Zodiac will also perform Adikia, which just slaps the east and west sides of the room with big circular AoEs. For this, simply move into Zodiac's hitbox and stand away from the snakes. This is the only mechanic that A marker was for. If the snakes are all the way in the front, just stand on the A marker to dodge everything. Otherwise, just get deep into Zodiac's hitbox. After a few more autos, Zodiac will begin a short intermission phase. He will summon four roiling darknesses that need to be defeated before the gauge fills. You'll need to contend with three sets of shape sigils in a random order while you kill off these orbs, all coming from Zodiac's direction. This introduces you to a third sigil, the Diamond Sigil. This just fires a line AoE that hits one third of the arena. Fortunately, there are these squiggles along the edge of the arena that you can use to identify how far the laser's reach will be, just about three squiggles over from the sigil itself. Now for the three patterns. Pattern number one is a triangle sigil in the center and two diamond sigils along the sides. Just stand next to the triangle sigil, and if you're a melee, you can still hit the orbs if you're careful at max melee. Pattern number two is one diamond sigil in the center and two triangle sigils on either side. Dodging this is the same, just move over slightly. Finally is one square sigil in the center and two diamond sigils on either side. Just get to the back half of the room and stay away from the sides. Reminder, these patterns happen in a random order every time. As such, if you are a ranged DPS, please focus on the orbs in the back of the room as a priority so your melee can still hit the front orbs when dodging the triangle sigils. They'll be grateful to you, trust me. Once the orbs are defeated, mitigate Zodiac's ultimate attack, a Pomnemonimata. What a mouthful. This brings you into the second phase, which will see new Paradigma patterns and a new addition to Astral Flow's arena rotation. Before that, though, you must contend with his newest attack, Astral Eclipse. Zodiac will become untargetable and fly around the arena, summoning star patterns. When he returns to the arena, these star patterns will, pattern by pattern, come crashing down, killing any player's hit in the crossfire. You'll need to navigate the safe spots in those patterns one at a time, quickly running to the next after the previous star's hit. There are these little circular markers on the arena itself that mark the center points of each star's impact, though their circular AoEs are big enough to cross slightly over into another star's seemingly safe spot, so watch your footing. This confuses a lot of people because each of the star patterns performs the AoE relative to where the pattern starts itself. So the first pattern comes from the west, the second pattern comes from the south, and the third pattern from the east. If you have a marker person guiding you, great, just don't fall behind them too much. For figuring out yourself, these star patterns, I like to say, are like a book closing. The bottom row is hitting the side of the arena closest to the stars, and the top of the star pattern is hitting furthest from the star's start point. On top of that, each subsequent pattern always has a safe spot one marker over from the previous one, so you never need to sprint across the arena or anything like that here. It'll take a few tries, but once it clicks, it clicks hard. Scholars, if you have expedience up here, please use it. As the third star pattern is coming down, Zodiac will use Triple Esoteric Ray. This summons two sets of diamond sigils from his direction, a set of two and then one on its own. You'll need to watch which of them spawns first and not stand in front of them, then dodge into the area they blast after they go off. Sometimes the final eclipse safe spot is right in front of the first sigil, so you being mindful and getting out of the way is key. I recommend shielding close to the end of the eclipse downtime to help people in case they're hit here. Oh, and don't forget, the tank is taking autos during this too. Now we're on to Paradigma number 5. This will summon two behemoths and two birds. These can either be arranged where the birds are both on the same side of the room, or opposite of each other and with a behemoth in between. Either way, the arena is going to be rotated, so you'll want to stand under a creature that's 90 degrees from a bird to ensure that when it rotates, you're under a bird. You will have a new mechanic to contend with now. Zodiac will use a firewall that stretches across the arena diagonally. 
When he rotates the arena, the wall will rotate, blast anyone it crosses through, and give them a Vuln stack. Fortunately, during the rotation, the arena actually reveals the diagonal lines and you can use those as references. Just get on the side of that line that is safe from the rotating firewall itself, while standing under the right creature. The wall will miss, and you'll still end up under a bird if you do it right. After another tank buster and swap is simply a square sigil, exoterakos, and an Igodon. One corner of the room will be safe from both of these, so just get to that to avoid everything. Now for what is arguably the most dangerous mechanic outside of the stars, Paradigma number 6. This will summon 4 birds and 2 snakes to contend with, along with the rotating arena and the firewall. Now I've given you all the logic to solve these things already, but you just need to watch for the firewall in addition to that. It's just a lot of people get caught up on this one because it is so busy. I highly recommend popping party shields, personal and party mitigations, and just using those to keep everyone healthy in the case that people are indeed hit by the snakes. It's not the end of the world so long as everyone dodges the wall as well. To help, the snake AoEs actually pass through the midpoint of the bird's hitbox, so looking directly at the wall and getting to either side of the bird helps ensure safety. But really, just ensure people survive that snake hit. Right after that AoE, a Styx is going to go off, so you're going to have to deal with that repeated damage right on top of that. Right after that Styx ends, Zodiac will use Trimorphos Exotericos. This just summons three staggered triangle or square sigils at the east, west, and south sides of the room at random. Avoid them all, one at a time. Some patterns suck, and some patterns are really easy to avoid, especially for melee, but there's nothing to it but to do it. Right after this is an Anikia, so make sure to be either right under Zodiac's hitbox or on the opposite side of the room to him. Once you're past this, there's another Astral Eclipse. It works identically to the first, but after the third star pattern, Zodiac will use Igadon instead of those Diamond Sigils. You just have to avoid it. At the very least, pop knockback resist, so in case you do get hit, you don't go flying off the arena. After another Tank Buster is Peridegma number 7. This just has two snakes rotating with a firewall. The only twist is an Exotericos, but this will just force you to dodge to one side of the room. As soon as the Sigil and Snake AoEs go off, there will be three back-to-back -back sets of placed AoEs. Just dodge them together and then stack up because there's going to be another Sticks to mitigate and heal. After this, there will be a Triangle Exotericos and a Triple Esoteric Ray. Nothing fancy, just dodge the Diamond Sigils within the safe spot the Conal AoE leaves for you. Then there's Paradigma number 8. This one is super easy. Zodiac will summon a square sigil in the back of the room every time here. And the pattern itself will always be two birds across from each other and two behemoths across from each other. Just walk up to the behemoth that's closer to the front of the room and dodge on whichever side will be safe from the rotating firewall. After another Phobos to heal through, don't disrespect it, is another Trimorphos Exotericos which works the same as before. The only addition is an Igodon being used at the end of the third one, which you should be accustomed to dodging by now. This is immediately followed with another Sticks to stack up for right after. Unfortunately, if you made it this far into the fight, you have to deal with Pedidegma number 9, the final one. It's a repeat of the four birds plus two snake pattern back in Pedidegma number 6, but this time there's an Exotericos to contend with as well. Honestly, it hardly changes anything. Once you get safe of that, you just treat it exactly as you did Pedidegma number 6. With that, there will be one last sticks stack marker after. You just have to do this all the same and be ready for that healing afterwards. After this, Zodiac will cast his intermission ultimate attack again and enrage, ending the encounter. You have roughly 11 minutes and 37 seconds, so there is plenty of time to get the job done. If you have a player with a marker, you'll probably finish well before this. And that's going to be a wrap for my guide to Zodiac Extreme. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and be sure to check out the other Endwalker videos on my channel, or check out some of my tips from before Endwalker. Most of those will probably still be relevant. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.